So the plan with this engine was to go ahead and just clean it up, change all the gaskets, and uh, make it look nice and pretty, not gonna leak. Um, it was already running pretty decent. Um, I didn't have really have any concerns with it. One thing led to another, found a bent push rod, which led to uh, checking out all the lifters. Half of them were stuck, and the other half, well, they were stuck too. Basically, all the lifters were shot. I decided to go ahead and change the rear main seal, uh, but you can't change the rear main seal on this engine without pulling the crank, because it's been in there since 86, and uh, did not want to come out. Usually you can push on one side and slide it around, slide the new one in, uh, but it was stuck, it wasn't coming out. Um, so one thing led to another. I got the whole dang thing torn apart. Decided to go ahead and tear the uh, engine down a little bit further. I'm gonna try to avoid pulling the heads if I don't have to. Pull the rocker shafts off, the uh, push rods and lifters. I'm trying to clean all these little surfaces here. Proved very difficult without getting crap in there. Uh, even putting rags down and everything. Um, there's still ways that it uh, finds its way down there. Especially trying to clean off the uh, valve cover rails. At least on this one here I did, I didn't do that one yet. But uh, stuff just kept falling down inside there, and it's, it's just kind of a mess. So I'll be able to clean it out a little easier now. Um, once I get the pan off, I can actually uh, rinse it all the way down through the block, out the other side, flip it over, get everything, make sure everything's cleaned out. Now I got all the valve train over here. One of these things is certainly not like the other. This one right here, found a bent one. I'm gonna go through all the other ones a little bit better, but this one like kind of is really, really pretty obvious. I'm not sure what's caused that, so uh, I'll take a closer look at this lifter and the uh, rocker, as well as uh, the engine once I kind of get it uh, cleaned up a little bit more. See if there's any reason for that to, to bend, I have no idea. Uh, the cam actually looks uh, not too bad. I think it'll be fine. Um, it is obviously a roller cam. Anyway, yeah, I'll get this thing cleaned up. Well, I wasn't planning on getting the motor this tore down. I'm actually gonna be pulling the heads. Looking at the uh, exhaust ports, they're all soaked in oil. Um, all of these, uh, I don't know if you can see that little chunk in there. All these valve stem seals are all hard and busted up. I mean, this one, uh, which one was it? <laughs> I mean, this one right here is completely gone. So is this one over here, it's almost all gone too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these heads off, uh, pull all of the uh, valves out, inspect everything, put new valve seals. I've got a complete gasket kit, came in yesterday. New head gaskets, the whole nine yards. So I'm gonna go ahead and change out the valve seals, inspect everything. Um, this uh, intake valve right here uh, is the one that had the bent push rod. So I'm gonna see uh, if there's any binding with the valve, make sure the guide's okay. Um, no other issues that I can see. Uh, once I get it all, all apart, we'll know what's going on, hopefully. I'll also uh, check the lifter and make sure that there's no issues with that. Uh, get those all cleaned up and ready to go. So the number two cylinder intake valve push rod is bent. Several reasons why that could happen. Um, I suspect either the um, there's a bunch of dirt in the lifter uh, causing it to not compress um, and hopefully we didn't hit the valve on the piston. Um, could be the valve just simply stuck in the valve guide in the head. Um, so let's go ahead and get these uh, heads pulled off, uh, see if there's any evidence of uh, what could have happened. Um, hopefully it's just a, you know, maybe a gummed up lifter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull all these lifters apart, get them all cleaned. There's a bunch of debris that kind of fall, fell into them um, after pulling the intake and everything. Um, so I'm gonna get them all cleaned up and uh, ready to go, but hopefully find something uh, that can be cleaned and get them all put back on the car. I think I found the culprit to uh, why my uh, push rod was bent. These lifters are shot. Like this one right here, I can push in the valve because I took it apart and cleaned it. Same thing with this one right here. You can depress it so it'll actually work like a hydraulic lifter. A lot of these other ones are seized and um, about half of them are seized up 
and uh, they don't move. So it's kind of acting as a uh, self-set mechanical lifter, I suppose. Solid lifter, I guess, but I don't know. But uh, these are no good. Yeah, that's when I can plunge a little bit. But anyway, this one right here, took it apart. And the whole inside, because there's a there's this uh, top piece, and then there's a cylinder inside, and the outside of that cylinder is what slides up and down on the inside of the bore of the lifter. Well, the the whole thing inside on both the inside sleeve and the uh, inside of the lifter bore are completely scored, and uh, it, it's they're junk. So I'm gonna see if, uh, how much it's gonna be to order a whole another set of. Uh, Roller lifters here. Unexpected expenses. Motor looks pretty good though. It's not really a whole lot of ridge on there. Very slight carbon ridge, but not, not too bad. The rest of the motor I think is going to be okay. So aside from the lifters, I was going to get a new timing chain. I wound up picking up a used uh, Edelbrock. Came with this adapter plate so I could put a uh, uh, Holly square bore on there. Uh, when you're getting used uh, parts like this, you want to make sure you inspect everything, uh, look at all the holes, make sure that they're good, uh, all the threads. So I use the thread chaser on that. Don't use the tap because that'll actually cut. That'll cut uh, material off the threads, make your threads nice and thin. Um, so you use a thread chaser like this. Um, same way like you do with anything else. I've already ran this one down. And uh, it's kind of hard to do one-handed here, but and then you run it in just like a tap. Run it down and like go back it off a little bit. Go a rotation, back it off a half a rotation. Go a rotation, back it off a half. And then uh, run it all the way in and out. Make sure it's good. Um, and then uh, I just take an air gun and blow out the hole. Uh, you can run a little oil in there too. That'll help uh, make it go a little easier. Um, so I'm gonna take care of these while they're while it's off. So that way I can get uh, any debris out of there. I'm gonna run it through these as well. Hopefully these all check out okay. Um, yeah, you know, I got some little ones for the uh, the choke uh, riser there. Uh, anyway, the rest of uh, the uh, manifold actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's already cleaned up. I'm pretty much almost uh, ready to go on the engine. Got all the uh, threads chased. What's nice about these uh, manifolds is, regardless of which water neck you have, it'll fit the uh, small bolt pattern or the larger one. So you can use the, uh, either one, no matter which one you have. I do need to order a fitting for the uh, heater hose. Uh, this one here fits the manifold, but this is the size for the hose. So I need to uh, get the right one here. One of the things I like to do is, uh, like I said, make sure all the threads are clean, even, uh, even these pipe thread ones. Now, I don't have a uh, thread chaser for pipe threads. You gotta be super careful with those. Um, but I do have one of these. It's just, uh, this is a brand new one. You don't wanna use a used one because you don't wanna contaminate it with uh, you know, battery acid or anything. This is a brand new one. Um, this thing had a whole bunch of thread tape in it still. And then that thread tape was painted when the previous owner painted this manifold. Um, so I just kind of ran this in there, kind of spun it around and it pulled, it pulled all that old thread tape out. And it looked good to go. So um, I'm going to go ahead and plug this one. Um, it didn't. It was just an open hole again with a thread tape and paint on it. So I got that cleaned up. Got that plug in there. I haven't tightened it down yet. The um, I guess there's two different size uh, um, sending units for the uh, temperature. This is the one that came out of the old manifold. Fits in there just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse that. And then uh, for this one right here, like I said I need that uh, pipe. So. A lot of these pipe plugs have a square drive on the top, so they do make a socket that's a square drive, so it um, makes it real easy. I mean, you can use an open-end wrench as well. Uh, a lot of the other plugs more commonly uh, are a socket head, so you have a hex wrench to go in there. But uh, yeah, this is what I had, so that's what I'm gonna use. All right, just like the intake manifold, you wanna go through and uh, clear, uh, chase all these threads. Uh, in the timing cover, that way you know your bolts are going to fit in without any troubles once you got it on the car. Um, I'm actually going to run this one through the parts washer and get it cleaned up. Um, then once it goes back on the car, uh, then I'm going to be painting everything. 
um, basically just uh, cleaning the gasket surfaces. And uh, I think I might run this one in a bath of um, uh, Evaporust to get all the uh, corrosion out of there, clean it all up. Should be good to go. Uh, this is going to get painted engine color. I'm not going to leave it natural aluminum. Same with the timing cover. You can see this is a 80s model, and uh, so they paint their motors black. Uh, but I'm going to run this through the uh, solvent tank, parts washer, um, and then uh, chase all the threads just like I did uh, with the intake manifold there. Uh, get it cleaned up, and uh, one more part to go back on the car. Okay, now to the distributor. Uh, this thing's basically junk. A um, couple things were wrong with it. Uh, well, one, the um, vacuum advance is uh, shot. It's not holding the vacuum. Um, two, this wire is uh, kind of cooked. I could probably wrap some tape around that and make it work, but uh, it's pretty much ready to fall apart here. And number three, I'm going to try to do this one-handed, but uh, this shaft is loose. And if you look closely... on that you can see where it's actually been rubbing right on there now i adjusted that out to get some more clearance but even so it rubs against there you can see those shiny spots where it's been hitting and uh, this shaft just uh this shaft just wobbles back and forth so i'm just gonna go get a reman or uh i think dorman sells a brand new one it's about 60 bucks on uh Amazon, so I'm just gonna go pick one of those up and get it uh, get it coming. I got the first head cleaned up and uh, all new valve stem seals. Um, I checked out the uh, number two cylinder valve. Uh, looks like looking at the engine here, looked like it did. Just barely kissed it right there, but uh, spun the uh, valve and uh, seems to be straight. So we'll get this all cleaned up before, obviously, before we put it all back together. Time to get the other head off here. Got the underside of the engine all opened up. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna take that uh, rear cap off so I can change out the rear main seal. I'll look at the bearings on that one, but uh, the rest I'm pretty much gonna leave alone. Seemed to run good, had good oil pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and do a dingle ball rebuild on this thing, uh, clean up the block, hone out the cylinders. Um, I put a um, a board, uh, board gauge in here and uh, it looks okay. It's a standard bore. So I'm gonna buy a set of rings and bearings for it. I was just gonna go ahead and reuse the bearings. I got them all cleaned up, but uh, they didn't look too bad at first. But uh, looking at them, some of them have some grooves that I can actually catch my nail on. Um, and then uh, some other ones had some, eh, not too bad, but I mean, actually I should say not really bad for now, this is about an 86, so how old is that? But uh, a couple of them had, looks like it had uh, a couple little st stones stuck in there or something, I don't know. I had some debris in some of them. But... So I'm going to go ahead and get a whole new set of bearings, a new set of rings, and uh, clean everything up and, uh, and put it back together. Um, it's got the hydraulic cam. Um, these lobes looked all pretty good. I'm not going to worry about that. Cam bearings looked good. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was going to order more parts. A lot more money. Wasn't expecting on spending on this car, but, uh, you know, that's how it goes with the, with the project car. You kind of dig in a little bit and wind up going all the way. So the, uh, the crank uh, measured out just fine. It's all standard. Uh, I didn't see any concerns with the, uh, the crank journals or anything. Um, so they should be good to go and uh, Yeah, so I was hoping to have this engine done for this video, but um, Just how it goes sometimes uh, Stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna hopefully get this thing uh, back together again